see. Let's get this thing going, people. Oh, uh, well. Okay, mira. La primera vez, the first time we shot the video, y'all didn't say anything to me. All right, there was no hand count, no uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, no nothing. There was no flagging. And I kind of looked kind of crazy talking to myself. And, and you know, I, I had a little feedback. Huh? Don't say that. We on? Welcome. Welcome, 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 everyone. I am the Barber Concierge bringing to you Barber Stew. This is the first episode of Barber Stew, and I'm so excited on the subject matter. I had to switch things up because uh, a lot of information came my way, and I decided to talk on something. And the subject for today is these dang on barber prices, right? Um, it's a subject that uh, it I was irritated um, as people were sending me information. And they wanted me to talk about it. I decided that I didn't want to use um, names uh, in reference to who, you know, some of the issues that I have. And and, and I'll lead with, um, there was two athletes in particular. One plays for the Cowboys and the other guy. Hell, I don't even know. He's a basketball player, NBA. I don't even know who he plays for. Uh, both complain about their barbers. Charging they got different barbers, but the barbers are charging them outrageous money So I just want to quickly say that they neither article that I read Shared a lot of the information. I would have wanted to know as a barber. I would have wanted to know stuff like um, What was the price in, in the in the football players case? He said that he the barber went up so I was curious to know what the price was prior to. I believe the barber went up to, and I could be wrong, either he went up to $200 or he went up to $150. I, I want to think it was $200 for a home visit. So that would imply that he was at home, relaxed, in his relaxed state of mind, chilling, and the barber had to drive to him. I don't know how far. But here's the thing for these athletes out here. Um, is there women? First of all, let's just be honest. Is there gouging, right? I'm sure there is in some cases, right? There's, I'm sure there's some people, barbers. Some barbers aren't professional. Some barbers are, you know, they cut hair, but they're not professional. Barbers that are here chiming in, looking at this um, this segment of Barber Stew, um, it's not personal. It doesn't mean that the skill set, some barbers should be licensed in their state. If you're not licensed, that doesn't mean you don't have skill set. You could be maybe the best in your shop that you work in. But there's a professionalism that comes with our trade. We were proud. It was a proud profession, and it still continues to be a proud um, profession, right? So if you're gouging a person just because you know they have money, that's one thing. But that's not the, what I'm talking about. There's math that should be done, in my opinion, when you're going to anybody's place of business to cut their hair or they're going, you're going to their home to cut their hair. And it's simple. If I'm away from my place of normal business, I have to figure out how, much, how long I'm going to be at your place to cut your hair, and I have to figure out how long all of that's going to be and then bill myself by the hour and say, well, if I'm gonna be gone for two hours and I'm worth $80 an hour, that's 160 for two hours. So I'm gonna know I'm gonna charge them at least the 160. And then on top of the 160, there may be a premium just to get me to get in my car to drive to your house, right? I don't know how far the, um, the football player lived from the barber. I, I, these are things that I don't know. That's why. It doesn't really, it matters if you're trying to really figure it out. In reference to the NBA player, his barber was charging him $300 for his shape up. So he says, I don't know the real deal. This is what the basketball player says. I don't know that situation. Did you have your, you have your barber waiting 
and you know outside in your driveway for x amount of time that you bring them in the house and then you tell them to set up and then after he sets up it takes you another hour to get to him see i don't know what drama you might or may not bring to to your barber referring to an athlete right now Say the person's not an athlete. Let's say they're an attorney or whatever profession you feel that that they have, they're making a lot of money because they're good at what they do, right? So whatever profession, it doesn't matter what it is. There is a premium that should, could, should be charged. Now, this is all based on the barber concierge, yours truly, right? You, you um, price yourself by the hour based on how much money you could make if you was in your shop or place of business and then you add you go from there if you're a hard working man i don't you know whatever job that you feel that that is and you have a client that works i don't care it doesn't matter where there's still a formula there still should be a form now everybody is treated equally there's no gouging because the price is set for that barber by the hour all right, so those articles disturb me because those those the, the ball player and the football player they had issues and you know so that being said now um, prices now when let's say the uh, person comes to the barber shop you got out here I've been reading that the average a lot of there was one video in particular that I saw a pretty good video he he did a, a interview with people and said that they feel like the average price should be $25. And I'm talking about a lot of people said 25. What's up with 25? What makes 25 that number? And he even said the same thing. So I'm going to say it with him. What made 20, $25? And guess what, people? They broke it down by saying if it's a good haircut, it should be, you know, 35 some say 40, some say just 25. And if it's not a good haircut, I guess you're saying that it's $25. Who, how can you base a price based on whether it's good or not? If the barber cuts your hair and you don't like it, you stay in the shop to get it fixed by that barber or someone else, right? Um, you don't say, well, man, because of this haircut, I'm only going to give you this. I, 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 don't, I don't understand that. Communicate people. A client's job is to is to have a discussion with this barber, whether it's your, especially if it's your first time. It's communication. You can't go into a shop and say, "Oh, well, what kind of? How can I help you, sir?" Oh, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't. You ain't figured that out on your way there. And but so many styles. You know, now everybody wants to pull out a picture. When I was starting out three decades ago. There was no phone that you can sit there. And if you went by the price chart, there was, what, maybe 20 pictures on the half of them nobody used. And then you might have number one, five, and seven, or whatever it was. I want number one, five, or seven. Now everybody's pulling out the phone. I'm not um, I'm not upset of, of new barbering. I mean, the phone does help sometimes, uh, you know, with, with the pictures and stuff like that. But my point is, that a, a price, um, you, you need to know, communicate. So you're not handpicking, you're not going to sit there and decide whether this is considered a good haircut or not and then try to pay, charge, pay the barber based on what you feel is a good haircut or a bad haircut. Sorry, that's not flying. Now, prices start somewhere. I think some of you... Um, think that prices are just thrown in the air and it's where it lands, it lands. It's it's not quite like that. We have to be competitive because we do know that there are um, barbers that, that charge way less. But once, the, once you get down to a certain point, I'm going to tell you, some barbers might say, well, where did you, you see you can get a haircut for 10? Let me know so I can go. You know, all of that comparing, and nothing's the same, right? Um, so prices come from somewhere. There's typically a base. That base is set by barbers previously, previous to you coming to that shop. That price could have been set by the barbershop owner. The barbershop owner is charging you booth rent. So he doesn't not want to, he, you, he's charging you 200, this hypothetical. He's charging you $200 a week to work there. 
and you're charging $60 a haircut. That is not, may not fly too well, right? Eventually, he's going to go up on you because he sees that you are making, not the fact that you're making too much money, but the the it's not balanced in a way, right? Now, um, so, the, so the barber, but my point is that the owner could have set that price. The owner could have set the price and, and, and decided, hey, here, um, because I charge this amount booth rent, I charge this amount. And then I mentioned about the barbers before. If I just started at a shop and already by the time I get to this shop, haircuts are 40, well, guess what my haircuts start at? 40. And, and yes, there are barbers with different skill sets, but at the end of the day, that can be, that all can be worked out through your service and, and, and tips and stuff like that. So prices aren't just thrown up in the air. If you live in a, in Washington, D.C., and you're a barber in Washington, D.C., depending on what part of Washington, D.C. that you're in, haircuts can drastically change from somewhere like Georgia Avenue where, and I'm not even sure what the prices are. Matter of fact, I don't know what the prices are. But let's just go with um, $35 in, 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 in one part of Washington, D.C. You go to another part of Washington, D.C., the haircut price might shift to 50 And then here it is. You've been going to the place that's been charging you $35, or 30 to $35. And when you jump to the $50 side of the street, then you're going to tell that barber, how much you used to pay over here. He's going to say, well, okay, but this is what we charge over here, right? So prices, uh, did they come from somewhere? I started three decades ago. Three decades ago, that 30 years ago, haircuts were $10. If I would have went up $2 a year 30 years ago, that's 30 times 2 is 60. 60 plus the 10 that I was already charging is now $70. That's how easy a barber that's been cutting hair when the haircuts were real low. That's how they could look at it. That's their, that could be their formula. That, hey, I went up $2 a year. It's not bad. Every year, $2. Every year, $2. Every year, $2. Every year, $2. And now, in 2022, you could be charging 70 so is 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 fifty dollars and seventy dollars way too much? No, you don't. It, it's based on that barber. Every barber does not start at the same time, people. You can't expect the barber to charge fifteen dollars because he was charging fifteen twenty years ago, and he's not supposed to. Inflation this doesn't hit him; it hits you. You want your raise at your job, but. He can't get one because he's a barber. He's a professional. That's that's a trade. That's license. That's that's how he pays his bills, feeds his family like you do at your job. Which brings up a point because I I, I, I forgot as I was thinking about all this, I forgot that I was, this is what I also want to say about that. So this is a sidebar thing. If you tell your barber that you have short money we know short money is short money is you don't have all of it right you're five dollars short ten dollars short i don't care if you three dollars short and you say to your barber your boy your friend that barber and you tell him hey man i'm gonna give you the money in two weeks he might say okay man cool two weeks go by and on that day, you, well, you wait for that day. That day comes and goes. So the next day you say, hey, man, uh, uh, the barber calls the client. Hey, man, um, you, you know, you, you stole me $10. And that customer, that friend says, man, you being, man, why you being petty? And you know, I'm going to pay you. To, why you being petty? Man, if that don't burn me up, I ain't going to tell you no lie. That burns me up. That burn y'all up? Y'all wouldn't know. Yeah, that burns you. You wouldn't know. It burns. You ever done it? I know you did. But it burns me up. Why? 
Because at your not listen here. At your job, I don't care if you work at McDonald's, I don't care if you're a lawyer. Well, a lawyer's a little different, I would imagine. Because all right, so let's not go with lawyer. Let's just say any other job. Say you're a teacher, um, construction, doesn't matter. When you get your check every two weeks, you know that you're going to make, providing there's some overtime. We ain't talking about the overtime. We're talking about your hourly rate. Your taxes are taken out every time you get paid. You know that your check is $1,000. Let me just do it simple. Your check is $1,000. If that's every week or whatever. $1,000. And one day when you open up, you look on your account and you see that they only gave you $980. Because it's relative, right? You get a, a full check. We get pieces. We don't get a check at the end of the week. We get pieces every. So our check is $100, $150, $50, whatever. And then at the week, if you saved all your money and you ain't go to the grocery store, no gas, that's your check. That's our check. But it don't work that way. But you get a check. And for $20, you know what you're going to do? You're going to call the HR. You're going to talk to payroll. You're going to know who the, who's the supervisor to put your time in. You're going to go through channels over that $20 because you noticed that your check should have been $1,000. Now it's $980. But we aren't supposed to ask for our money and you get indignant. If you got an argument to that, let me know. Forget that it's cash money. You paying your barber cash. That's cash is because that's how it's always. If it wasn't for technology and in the in the different forms of taking payments, you still be paying cash. Some barbers still only take cash, although you got to move with the times a little bit. But the point is that I'm calling about my five dollars, like you calling about your twenty. Because remember, I get pieces, you get checks, or a check. Right. So that was just a sidebar thing. Never feel like somebody is pressing you out when your word is your bond. If you tell me that you're going to pay me in two weeks. I'm expecting to get paid in two weeks, not two weeks in, a, in four days, not two weeks in seven. Another week added on to it. <clears throat> I took you at your word. I didn't call you. I didn't press you out. All I did was call you once. I see that you got amnesia again. All right. So that, excuse me, <clears throat> that was a sidebar. But back to the the job. So you come in and, and a barber charges his price. And I may agree with some um, other uh, barbers that say that maybe you, we need to charge for more services, right? Add, add a service. Add one or two services if you want more money. You just can't go around charging every two weeks more money to your customer because you had a bad day, bad week, or something like that. You shouldn't be going up that often you know and when it comes to the price of your haircut so important to know that prices aren't just thrown up in the air it's based upon other shops it's based upon other barbers before you right it's based on the owner it's based on booth rent it's based on inflation the economy it's based on a lot of things right and then i want and then tipping Tipping, I really, I wasn't going to talk about it, but I'm, I'm going to just go all in by saying it's appreciated. It's appreciated whether the person gives you a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars on up tip. But let's talk about the other kind of tip. Do you bring clients to your barber? Do you, you know, hey, do you recommend uh, your barber, you know, the barber to your friends and family, your uncle and your brother and your father and your cousins? When they're in town, hey man, come see my man. Da da. Do you do that? That's a tip too, barbers. That because they don't have to do any of it. Do the way and in retrospect, do you have business cards to give to your customers to say, hey man, take to see your job, man. If you you know maybe if they comment on if they've commented on on my work, they too can get something like that. You know, it, it just depends, right? That those are forms of tip. Some people just don't have the extra, right? Some people have the extra and they go beyond. Does it make the person that doesn't tip that much feel bad? It shouldn't. You give what you can give if, if you decide to give it. Some make a comparison between waiters and barbers. I'm not even going to just have that food for thought. 
you some people won't go to a restaurant if they don't have enough money for that 22 percent or 20 percent and stuff some don't tip nothing some don't tip their barber at all like i said fine monetary wise but they 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 give compliments they're always talking that barber up to people we we got to appreciate those things too so as a recap i wanted to say um we've talked about tipping we've talked about the regular guy regular guy i'm just saying that hard working man or a young man just the, the the average person that comes to the shop we talked about athletes we talked about is there gouging i think there is gouging to a certain extent but you have to know the full scope of that service to say that it's gouging you just can't say because somebody charges a thousand a barber charges a thousand you don't know if that if the if the barber the, the customer is complaining about the thousand but you had him cut all your boys that was over there but the only thing you talking about was man he hit me for a g so we got to know we, we you got to know the circumstances as um for us viewing a video because those those videos i'm gonna tell you when i saw those athletes those two athletes i'm sure there's plenty more i i just felt like come on man it's not that you're athlete you got the money and you're complaining it's you're you're at home you did not travel you you felt that you were that special that you wanted the barber to come to you. And when he comes to you, he might not go to no one else, but he went to you. He might That might not be part of his, what he does. It could be, but we don't know. But let's just say it's not, but he'll do it for you. You heard about him, you called him up, and you tried him once. You liked it because you, you, you liked his haircut because you kept coming, but you, you called him before. Remember, he said that the barber went up and 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 this this athlete i'm told that he's frugal he said it himself in the article he's frugal he doesn't believe he said that the haircut he re, he doesn't doesn't think a haircut is worth more than 10 20 dollars but his salary is figure that one out his salary ain't what other people in his position got back in the day 30 years ago 20 years ago he got that fresh salary right so Nevertheless, you've been um, you've been fed a little bit, barber stew. It's all about conversation, looking at things from different viewpoints. All my job is as a host here is to introduce certain things, and we can run from it from there. We can sit there and talk about it on the next episode. Um, this is episode one, the very first one, but I just felt that it was important for me to talk about pricing once I read those articles. I believe my third, ep well, my second episode, well, I better not say because something else might come across that people want to talk about. And so this one is for those that wanted to hear me talk about the prices of haircuts and wh where does it come. And if I said anything disrespectful, I apologize. If you want to talk, um, leave me a question. We could talk about it further. But until next time, you, my, your host, the Barber Concierge. This channel is the Barber, uh, the Barber Stew. And please hit the subscribe, hit the bell, hit those things that you need to hit in order to hit, see my second official, uh, second official episode of Barber Stew. Peace and hair grease to you. Bye. Mira, por favor. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Hágame algo. Ok. Porque esto no está bien. Y tengo la gente que me está mirando y usted está bobeando. Ok. Y, y por favor, I want some music next time. I need music. Give me something to come to. to. Anyway.